Hey guys, Miss Miklos here, and this is the pre-calculus chapter 9 review. And instead of doing problems off of your review worksheet, um, I decided to just kind of model some questions that will be similar to stuff that you will be asked on the test. So the first type of question that you guys are going to see um, is going to ask you to identify the type of conic. So that means we just need to be able to figure out, is it a parabola, a circle, a hyperbola, or an ellipse? So real quickly, I know something is a parabola if only one variable is squared. That one I think is the easiest to see. The other three options, um, I need to look and see, first of all, both variables should be squared, and I want to get them on the same side of the equation. If I have them on the same side of the equation and it's a subtraction, I know it's a hyperbola. If I have them on the same side of the equation, they're both squared, we have addition, and they have the same coefficient, then it's a circle, so that would be like x squared plus y squared. An ellipse would be both squared, addition, same side of the equation, but we have different coefficients, like x squared plus 5y squared. Okay, so I'm just quickly going to go through these, and we're going to determine what type it is. So if we look at this first one, x minus 1 squared plus y squared equals 16. I notice they're both squared. They have the same coefficient of 1, so that would make this a circle. Number two, 4y equals x squared. I notice right away I only have one variable that is squared, so that means that it is a parabola. Number three, 2x squared minus y squared. They're both squared, but I have this subtraction going on, so I know it's a hyperbola. And then lastly here, I have 3x squared plus 4y squared. Okay, they're both squared. It's addition, but they have different coefficients, so that would make this an ellipse. So that would be similar to the first um, section that will be on our test. Now let's get into some of the tougher problems. So in this problem, it's asking me to find the vertex, focus, and directrix. So that should be a signal to me that this is a parabola. And I can tell it's a parabola because I only have one variable that's squared. However, I can see this definitely does not look like it is in the correct form. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is move my 3 times y plus 2 onto the other side. And I moved that by adding it to both sides. Since it was subtraction here, I had to add it. So that's why it became positive on the other side of the equation. I also know that I need to go ahead and get my coefficient onto my squared term. So this ends up becoming 1 third times the quantity x minus 1 squared equals y plus 2. Okay, and that one third came because this is like a one divided by three. So the first thing I'm going to find is my vertex. And my vertex here, remember I'm taking the opposite of whatever's inside the parentheses. So it would be one, negative two. Now to figure out our focus and our directrix, we are going to use the equation d equals one over four a. And this is going to tell us the distance from the vertex, which I'm just going to box because that's one of our answers. Um, D is the distance from the vertex to the focus and to the directrix. So in this case, my A value is 1 over 3. Okay, so I have 4 times 1 third, and of course I made this problem kind of ugly for us. Um, so I get 1 over 4 thirds which I know 1 divided by 4 thirds is like 1 times 3 fourths. So I get the distance is 3 fourths. I'm just going to sketch a little picture here, and it doesn't necessarily need to be to scale, but I think often it helps if we graph it to know what direction we need to actually move in. Since this is a y equals, I know y goes up and down, and my a value is positive, so that means that this parabola is going up, and the only reason why that matters is because that means from my vertex, I'm going to move up for our focus, and I'm going to move down for our directrix. So we said we need to move 3 fourths, so I'm going to move up 3 fourths. So that ordered pair for our focus would be at 1, negative 1 and 1 fourth, or negative 5 fourths. Okay, I also know that for my directrix, I need to move down 3 fourths from our 
um, vertex. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that line. So that would be a line at y equals negative 2 and 3 fourths, or I'm glad I can think here, um, negative 11 fourths. Okay, that would be 2 and 3 fourths. So, key thing for us on a problem like this, first I need to get it into the correct form, and then I need to use my d equals 1 over 4a. I know my focus is always inside my parabola. My directrix is always outside our parabola. This next problem is asking us to find a center and a radius, and looking at these squared terms, I can tell this is a circle. It also appears that we need to use completing the square because I have an extra x and I have an extra y. So I'm going to go ahead and group my x terms together, and I'm going to group my y terms together, and it is set equal to zero. So I need to go ahead and figure out what to add to both of these to create a perfect square trinomial. So here I'm taking 4 and I'm going to divide it by 2 and square it. So I end up getting plus 4 plus 4 because I know whatever I add to one side I have to add to the other side. My other one here I'm going to take that negative 6 and divide it by 2 which is negative 3 and square it. So I'm actually adding 9 to both sides. So when I factor this, it becomes x plus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 13. Just a reminder that this value is always half of the middle coefficient, and that is true because these are both perfect square trinomials. So my center is negative 2, 3, and my radius in this case would be the square root of 13 because I know this represents r squared. So these would be our two answers. On this problem, we have an ellipse, and I can tell it's an ellipse because it's addition, they're both squared, and they have different coefficients. And this one's nice because it's in the correct form. So we need to find the vertices and the foci. And in order to do that, I actually need to find the center first, which would be 1, negative 3, because once again, I'm taking the opposites. And I'm going to go ahead and sketch this out for myself just so I can have a visual aid. Okay, this 25 means I'm moving to the right 5 and the left 5 because 5 is the square root of that value. So I'm going to go ahead and move to the right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and move to the left 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This y, or this y denominator is telling me how far up and down to move. And since it's 16, that's telling me to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 1, 2, 3, 4. So technically, this would be what our circle looks like. Now, what is significant about this is I know that our um, vertices are always on the major axis, which is the longer denominator, or the longer, I should say, axis, I guess, um, which it's saying which side do we go out further on? Do we go out further on x's or on y's? And I can see from this we go out further on x's because it has a bigger denominator. So those ordered pairs appear to be, it looks like it was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so I have one of 6, negative 3, and this other one is at negative 4, negative 3. Okay, so we can find those without graphing, but I think graphing makes it a little bit nicer. Now to find our foci, the way we find foci is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. A squared and B squared represent these denominators, and I always do the big minus the small. So in this case, I'm going to do c squared equals 25 minus 16. So c squared is 9, so c is 3. So what that is telling me is that from the center, I need to move to the right 1, 2, 3, and to the left 1, 2, 3. And that is in the direction of the major axis. So the vertices and the foci should be going in the same direction. And those ordered pairs would be 4, negative 3 and negative 2, negative 3. 
So that's how we find vertices and foci in an ellipse. Next, I just want to go through some that are graphing. And in the graphing section on your test, um, these problems are already going to be in the right form for the most part. Um, like this is already in the right form. And we just need to find enough characteristics to help me know how to graph this. So first of all, I can tell that this has to be a parabola because only one variable is squared. So I need to find out what my vertex is. And it appears my vertex would be 1, negative 1. Okay, so I'm just going to make kind of an ugly looking graph, but hopefully you guys will get the hang of it. Um, so I'm plotting my point at 1, negative 1. The fact that this is an x equals graph tells me my options are right or left, and the fact that our a value is positive tells me it's going to go to the right. 3 tells me that it should be what we call the skinny graph, which means I'm going to go to the right 2 and up 1, and to the right 2 and down 1, and I can go ahead and sketch my graph. And quite honestly, this is really all I would need in order to get this problem correct. I don't care about where the focus is or the directrix or the line of symmetry or any of that. We just need to know what would the graph actually look like. Okay, this next problem appears to be a hyperbola, but I notice that I don't have a denominator for y. So I'm going to go ahead and set that divided by 1. I know this is in the correct form because it's already equal to 1, and I'm just going to write a note this is a hyperbola. Um, our center is going to be at 0, 0, because I don't have parentheses for x or for y. So I'm going to go ahead and put a point at 0, 0. Now this x denominator tells me I'm going to move out 3 to the right and 3 to the left. And the y denominator tells me I'm going to move up 1 and down 1. And I'm going to go ahead and draw our box. And the reason why we're drawing the box is so that I can go ahead and figure out where the heck these asymptotes are going to be. Now, to figure out if I'm graphing up and down or if I'm graphing right and left, it depends upon which variable is positive. Since x is positive, that means we're graphing on the x-axis. So I would go ahead and graph this to the right and to the left. And my vertices are at these points which I already plotted. And my hyperbola is getting close to the asymptotes without actually touching. This problem looks really similar, except that we have addition, so I know that this is an ellipse. Once again, my center is 0, 0. So all I really need to do for graphing it, okay, this x denominator is telling me to move to the right 2 and to the left 2. And the y denominator is telling me to move up 4 and down 4. Then I would go ahead and I would connect those four points. Our next one here, you guessed it, is a circle, the only one we haven't really graphed yet. My center is at 1, 0, and my radius is 3. And I'm getting 3 because it is the square root of that value. So when I'm graphing this, I'm going to start at 1, 0, and then I need to go out 3 in all directions. And remember, on this portion, you guys are actually matching it, so you're not even graphing it by hand. But this is what my circle would look like. The next section um, makes you find the equation. So here's a parabola example. So it tells me the vertex, so I'm going to just kind of sketch this out for myself, is at 2, 1, and our focus is at 2, 3. So what this tells me is that my parabola has to be opening up because I know that the focus is always inside the parabola. So that helps me know that it should be a y equals parabola. So I'm going to go ahead and write y minus k equals a times x minus h squared. Now, we actually know our h and k values because of our vertex. So I'm going to write this as y minus 1 equals a times x minus 2 squared because I'm taking the opposite of these numbers in their corresponding parentheses. Now to figure out our a value, we're using that formula once again, d equals 1 over 4a. And this time, I'm needing to find a. I can actually see the distance here is 2. So I can say 2 equals 1 over 4a, 
because I can see that my focus is two spots away from our vertex. So I get 8a is equal to 1, but I multiply both sides by 4a, and a is 1 eighth. So my answer here would be y minus 1 equals 1 eighth times x minus 2 squared. And it would make sense that 1 eighth is positive because my parabola is opening up. In this one, it tells us, and I'm going to sketch this out again, that the foci are at 0, 0, and at 6, 0, and our major axis length is 10. So what this helps me with, if these are my foci, I know my major axis also has to be going this way. And with the foci being at 0, 0, and 6, 0, I can see that 3, 0 is going to be the center. So if the major axis length is 10, that means I'm going out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in each direction, okay? And I don't really care how far up or down we're going. This just gives me a general idea. Um, so I can go ahead and write x minus 3 squared over something plus y squared over something equals 1. And once again, this 3 and the 0 came from what our center was because I know that was the midpoint of our foci. It also would have been the midpoint of our vertices had that been given to us. Now I can see that from our center we move out 5, so I'm going to square that number and that is going to become our x denominator. Now I don't know what our y denominator should be, but we know to find where the foci are it is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. This time, I can actually see that the foci are 3 away, so I'm going to do 3 squared equals, I know 25 is our big denominator, but I don't know what b squared is. So I have 9 equals 25 minus b squared, so negative 16 equals negative b squared, and 16 is b squared, so 16 would become our denominator. I don't need to square that or square root it or anything because it should be b squared in our final equation. And here's the hyperbola finding the equation. So once again, I'm gonna just graph this to help me out. So my vertices are at two zero and negative two zero. That tells me that it is going to the right and left. I kind of missed where that was, but it's just a sketch so it doesn't really matter. And it tells me that my foci are at 3, 0 and negative 3, 0. So some things that I know, um, I can see here that the center would be at 0, 0. And since it is going around the x-axis, that means my x value is going to be positive. So I know I'm going to have x squared minus y squared. I can see that I'm moving out 2 from our center. Um, in the x direction, so that denominator is going to be 4 because I'm taking 2 and I'm squaring it. For our hyperbola, our equation to find the foci instead of minus is plus. So I can see that our foci are 3 away from our center, so I'm going to do 3 squared equals 4 plus b squared, so 9 equals 4 plus b squared, so I get 5 is our other denominator. And remember, with a hyperbola, um, the major axis is whichever one is positive. So it could be that our other denominator is actually bigger, but since x is positive, that's how I knew it was going to the right and to the left. So that kind of sums up conic, and now we're moving on to polar. So the first three polar questions are going to be x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, Remember y, sine, it's dumb, but it helps. Okay, and then r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Those three things you guys need to have memorized. Then there are some problems where we need to convert. Okay, this first one, this is already in um, polar, so I need to get rid of r and theta and get it in terms of x and y. I know r cosine theta is equal to x, so I'm going to just substitute that in, and I would get x equals 4. And we know that r cosine theta equals 4 is just a line. Okay, my other equation here is in rectangular form, and I want to convert it into 
polar form. So I know x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So my whole point here is I'm getting rid of x and y and replacing it with r and or theta. And then I would just say r equals 3 because I would square root both sides because our polar equations tend to have r isolated. Now, if this was free response, I would accept either of those answers, but this is multiple choice, so you guys would just see one of these as the answer option. The next thing we learned how to do is actually graph ordered pairs, okay? So I, I just want to go through four of these really quickly, and why don't we call these A, B, C, and D. So this first one, 2, 3 pi over 4, I know a lot of you guys... Um, converted that into degrees, and this would be 135 degrees. And just a reminder that each line is worth 15 degrees. So I'm going to go to the right 2, and then I'm going to move 135 degrees, and I'm going to put that point and label that A. So key things for us, if it's positive, I'm moving to the right, and then I'm moving on a positive angle, I'm moving counterclockwise. Okay, for B, we have to start with a negative value, and I know pi over 3 is actually 60 degrees. So this time I need to move to the left 3 and then move counterclockwise 60 degrees. So I'm moving to the left 1, 2, 3, and then I'm moving, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 different lines there, and that would be point B. Okay. Our third point here, this one's kind of interesting because our radius is zero. And so if our radius is zero, that means I can just put the point at the pole and that would be our point C. And it doesn't even matter um, what our angle was. Lastly here, negative two, negative seven pi over four. Okay, negative seven pi over four ends up being, let's see, um, negative, 315 degrees. And so what this is really telling me to do is move to the left, and then I know a negative angle means I move clockwise. Now if I really wanted to, I could also add 360 to this to make it a positive coterminal angle and figure out that it would be 45 degrees. So if we look at this, negative 2 means I'm going to the left, and then I could go counterclockwise 45 degrees, or I could go clockwise 315 degrees, and I end up at the same exact spot. So this would be point D. The next section is going to um, make you classify the type of polar graph. And it does um, make you be specific. So your options aren't just going to be a limosone, it would be like, um, an inner loop, or a cardioid, or um, dimpled. So we need to be able to tell the difference between all of those. Okay, so if we look at this first one, r equals 3 sine theta. If I'm looking at that, I can see that this is a circle. So I, I would go ahead and choose circle for that. Now if it said r sine theta equals 3, then that would be a line. Okay, our next one, r squared equals negative 9 cosine 2 theta. As soon as I see this r squared, that is a signal to me that this is a lemnus gate. Our next one, r equals 4 minus 3 sine theta. Okay, I know that this has to be a limosone, but I need to figure out what kind. So I'm comparing the absolute value of, um, the, of those two values. So... I need to compare them, and I know that 4 is greater than 3. So I know if the A value is bigger, that it is a, I didn't mean to write cardioid there, um, that that would be a dimpled. Okay, if the absolute value of A and B are the same, that's when it was a cardioid. Um, when the absolute value of B is bigger, that's when it would be um, an inner loop. And lastly here, I have theta equals pi over 4. This would be an example of a line. So if you need more practice on this, definitely go through questions and um, 
make sure that you are understanding how to differentiate the different types. So some of the worksheets we did um, were really easy to figure out. Okay, so now we're actually going to graph some of these. So um, if I go ahead and get into this one, um, I can tell that since it's R squared, that it is a lemniscate. And since it's a positive cosine, I know I need to start at zero degrees. So I'm going to take plus or minus the square root of nine, and that tells me my ordered pairs are going to be at three zero degrees and at negative three zero degrees. Okay, so when I'm actually graphing this, I'm going to go to the right one, two, three, and then to the left one, two, three, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw my pretty bow tie. Our next problem says r sine theta equals negative two. I remember r sine theta is actually equal to y, so this is actually um, just a straight line, so y equals negative two. So when I graph this, I'm going to go um, down one, two, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw a horizontal line through that point. R equals two plus four sine theta. I can tell that that is a limosome. Um, to be more specific, it's actually going to be um, an inner loop. So I'm going to make an R theta chart, and I'm going to do 0, 90, 180, and 270. Um, just a reminder, if I'm putting these in my calculator, I would need to be sure that I am in degree mode because these are all degrees. When I put these in, I end up getting two zero degrees, six 90 degrees, two 180, and then I get negative two, 270. So I'm going to go ahead and look at my graph here and plot these points. So um, I would say on our survivor quiz, this is the type of question that was most missed. So let's say I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I think that's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. Okay, two, one, eighty would be over here. Now negative two, two, seventy. This is the type of ordered pair we messed up on. So I'm going to go to the left two, and then two hundred seventy degrees, which brings me up here. So my points actually up here. So when I'm graphing this, I can see that we have our inner loop. Okay, so key thing for us in a limosome, regardless of what type it is, is I need to make this R theta chart with all of our quadrantals. R equals 3 cosine 2 theta. I can tell that this is a rose, and my n value is 2. So we learned if n was odd, that was the number of petals. Here, since it's even, our number of petals would be 4. I also know that since it is cosine, my first um, petal is going to be at zero degrees. And I'm going to do 360 divided by the number of petals um, to tell me how many degrees are between petals. Now, if it was sine, I would need to do 90 divided by n. This 3 tells me that we're actually going to go out 3. So let me go ahead and put my graph out here. So my first ordered pair, I'm going out one, two, three, zero degrees. And then I'm going to move 90 degrees and do the same thing, 90 degrees and 90 degrees. And then I'm going to go ahead and graph my rows. And that rose is really ugly, but you guys get the whole, like, sense of what I'm doing. Final concepts, we need to write the equation. So if I look at a question like this, I can see with these two like petals, it kind of looks like a bow tie. I know that this is a limnoscate. And in fact, since it is at positive 45, I know it is r squared equals a squared sine 2 theta. So um, depending on where my petal is at, and there's really four options, that de decides if a is positive or negative, and if this is sine or cosine. Now, this graph appears that we go out 1, 2, 3. So that means my equation is going to be r squared equals 9 sine 2 theta. And our very last question, um, write the equation. I can see that this is um, a dimpled graph. And I can see that it is symmetric. I didn't mean to draw like that. There we go. I can see that it is symmetric here. Um, 
on the y-axis, which means that it has to be an r equals a plus b sine theta. If it was symmetric on the x-axis, it would be cosine. And I'm going to choose two ordered pairs. I'm going to choose this ordered pair of two zero degrees and one 90 degrees. So I have two equals a plus b sine of zero. And I also have one equals a plus b sine of 90. Now, sine of zero degrees is zero. So I know that just becomes two equals a because b times zero is zero. Sine of 90 is 1, so 1 times b is b. So I'm going to substitute this value in for a, and I get 1 equals 2 plus b, or negative 1 is our b value. So my equation would be r equals 2 minus 1 sine theta, or we might see that um, just as 2 minus sine theta. And it would make sense um, looking at this, that um, the absolute value of our a is bigger than our absolute value of our b because of the fact that our a value, or I'm sorry, that this is um, a dimpled graph. Okay, I know if it's a cardioid, these are the same. If it's an inner loop, our b value is bigger. So hopefully this gives you guys a good recap of everything you need to know for our upcoming test.